I need the toilet, excuse me. Most people who know Gordon Ramsay know him as the angry chef who yells at people, swears a lot, and is never happy with anything. Because I feel if I eat any more, I'll be crapping for the next 105 years. But Gordon Ramsay is actually a really friendly guy with a real passion for food. All he wants to do is teach people how to make better food on their own. So whether you're a gourmet wannabe or a novice chef, why not take a shot at these top 10 famous Gordon Ramsay dishes? <laughs> Chef Ramsay's fish cakes with anchovy dressing. Happy with that? Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, There's an episode of Kitchen Nightmares where Gordon Ramsay finds himself in a struggling restaurant that serves fish cakes as one of its main dishes. Ramsay quickly notes that these fish cakes, served from frozen, are flavorless and have no visual flair to make people want to eat them. After all, a fish cake can be a beautiful thing, full of color and flavors that all complement each other perfectly. It only makes sense, then, that Gordon Ramsay would share his recipe for fish cakes along with an anchovy dressing. These fish cakes combine the delicious flavors of both fresh salmon and smoked haddock, along with lemon, thyme, and parsley, with potatoes and breadcrumbs to create fish cakes that are both light and packed with flavor. And the fresh fish cakes are going down a storm. Nice, they're nice and light. Mm. As for the anchovy dressing, Ramsay combines marinated anchovies with capers, parsley, and shallots to create a bright, acidic dressing to perfectly complement the milder and more hearty flavor of the fish cakes. Most people might be turned off on the idea of a cake made of fish, as well as a dressing made with anchovies, but when it comes to cooking something delicious, you just have to trust the expert. Oh, <laughs> to die for. If you're new to the channel, trust us and show us some love by smashing that subscribe button and tapping that bell to be a part of our notification squad. Gordon Ramsay's roast chicken. This chicken was roasted two and a half days ago. I am not happy to hear that at all. A good roast chicken is one of the most common meals in the world. It's delicious, hearty, and always welcome at any dinner table, even among the pickiest eaters. However, despite its popularity, few people really know how to make a really, truly great roast chicken. While it can be tricky to get every part of the process exactly right, there are some great recipes out there that will give you the basics you need for roasting the perfect chicken every time. You freeze them and you reheat them in the microwave. A lot of people say it's it's good. One of those recipes happens to belong to Gordon Ramsay. Obviously, a chef with as much experience under his belt as Ramsay would have a roast chicken recipe, and you can trust that it's going to be great, as long as you follow the steps in his recipe and make sure you use the best, freshest ingredients. Ramsay's roast chicken is actually deceptively simple, utilizing just a few extra ingredients to highlight the real star of the show, the chicken. The recipe also includes a chickpea stuffing, which helps to enhance the flavor of the bird. Overall, roast chicken is a recipe that anyone should be able to make, and using Gordon Ramsay's recipe is sure to impress people. A delicious, very charming, stuffed roast chicken. Gordon Ramsay's herb omelet. That's a nice way of doing an omelet, olive oil, we know that. Yeah, I know. In France, they always make their omelets with olive oil. We always make our omelets with olive oil. Knowing how to make an omelet is another essential skill to have in the kitchen. After all, there might not be a more popular breakfast item than a well-made omelet. Omelets are also great because they demand customization. You can put almost any food item you can think of in an omelet, and it's going to taste amazing. So it only makes sense that as a professional chef, Gordon Ramsay has made his share of omelets. One of the best ones he has ever produced actually happens to be very simple. It's also a good way to learn some good omelet techniques. What do you think? Mm. For Gordon Ramsay's version of this amazingly easy and somehow impressive breakfast dish, all you need are eggs, tomatoes, and whichever herbs you like best. Ramsay recommends parsley, chervil, and chives. The best thing about this omelet is that it is tasty and vegetarian, so if you have friends that don't eat meat, this is a great option to make for them. The key to making a good omelet, besides breaking a few eggs, is practice. Omelets are famously tricky because of the flipping, but really when it comes down to it, it's a skill that's easy to master and so good to have in your back pocket. Mastering an omelet can lead to other great culinary works like a frittata or even a great quiche. It's as good as. As good as. <laughs> I think you've been okay. absolute sweetheart. Thank you, Thank you darling. Right. Meatball subs the Ramsey way. My back's turned to two minutes, and that's what I've got.
A meatball sub is practically the perfect sandwich, isn't it? What's not to love about these hearty, filling, and delicious sandwiches? First, you've got good, solid meatballs, which are always a winner. After all, who doesn't love meat in spherical form? No one, that's who. Next, you have rich, delicious tomato sauce. It's practically a given that tomato sauce will make almost anything taste better right away. Don't believe us? Eat a bowl of plain noodles, then tell us what they're missing. Then you have cheese. What can we say about cheese besides the fact that it makes everything way, way better? Cheese is the lifeblood of any dish. It's the blanket that is laid on top of the bed of flavors. It just makes life worth living. The greatest sandwich in the world! Finally, one of the most underrated components of any sandwich? The bread. A good, crusty roll can be the make or break moment of any meatball sub. If you've never tried to make your own and have only ever gotten meatball subs from Subway, yeah then you absolutely have to try making Gordon Ramsay's version of a meatball sub. Not only does his recipe tell you how to make meatballs from scratch, but it will also help you to understand what makes a meatball great and how to properly cook them to get the best flavor profile. How good is that? Oh, wow. Chef Ramsay's stuffed pork tenderloin. And that, that is just a world away from commercial pork. Yeah. The color, the yeah. texture. Trying to find new things to make for dinner can be a difficult task. Often, people will end up resigned to eating the same things over and over again simply because they are cheap, easy to make, and do the job of filling their belly. However, no human can eat the same thing day in and day out and be truly happy. Variety is the spice of life, and trying new recipes to incorporate into your weekly routine is a great way to break out of a dietary rut. You need to look no further than the recipes of Gordon Ramsay, as he is a man who knows how to make even simple dishes taste amazing. One thing that he makes that would be a great recipe to have in your own repertoire is stuffed pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin is a great cut of meat. It's tender, juicy, and actually relatively inexpensive. There are so many things you can do with it, but Ramsay's method of making it with a hearty manchego and membrillo stuffing is an excellent way to enhance the flavor of the pork while getting some other great flavors in there as well. This is a great recipe to learn the technique of butterflying meat for stuffing. Rich, sumptuous, it's the most tender part of the pig. Mini Chocolate Tarts by Chef Ramsay. $74. This place is insane. When it's time for dessert, there's only one way to make everyone happy. Chocolate. Whether it's chocolate cake, ice cream, or even just some good old-fashioned bonbons, it's hard for people to resist chocolate siren song. Aside from the classic desserts, though, how can you make chocolate more interesting? What can you do that no one will be expecting? After all, chocolate cake is usually a winner, but it's played out. Everyone's had enough chocolate cake by the time they're grown up. They want something different. How can you give them that? Well, for one thing, you could try Gordon Ramsay's chocolate tarts. That's right, the famous chef isn't just known for his amazing entrees. He's also known for his wonderful desserts. After all, Ramsay likes to be versatile, and there's no more versatility than knowing how to make the perfect meal and topping it off with a great dessert. These chocolate tarts may take some effort, but the end result will be amazing. Plus, you can use them as an opportunity to hone your skills with baking. Some people are intimidated by baking. They figure that they'll get one thing wrong and ruin the whole thing. Well, the truth is, that can happen, but if you follow the instructions closely and use your knowledge and focus, you can make something great and everyone will love it. Perfect. Gordon Ramsay's butter chicken. Bloody hell. It is? Mm. Nothing gives me more pleasure than seeing That's someone eat and say bloody hell. <laughs> butter chicken is probably one of the most popular dishes in England. There's no reason why it shouldn't be, either. Butter chicken is one of the most delicious and rich meals you can have. The combination of Indian spices with the rich, creamy tomato sauce, combined with some good basmati rice, and maybe some naan on the side, makes for one of the most satisfying meals you can think of. However, there's no reason that you have to call an Indian restaurant and get this as takeout. Why do that when you can easily learn to make your own butter chicken at home? Luckily, Gordon Ramsay has a butter chicken recipe that is absolutely amazing and can really teach you some good lessons about seasoning and enhancing the flavor of your dishes. This classic dish utilizes a spice blend from India called garam masala. This spice blend is essential to Indian cooking, so if you find it on the supermarket shelf, make sure to pick some up. It will last in your cupboard and can open up so many meal opportunities for you. Another great tip when making this dish is to make it ahead of time. If you do, then the chicken can have a chance to marinate in the sauce and pick up a lot more of those flavors. While there are a lot of ingredients and it can seem like a daunting task at first, the final product will be more than worth it. What do you think? It's absolutely delicious. Brussels sprouts with pancetta by Gordon Ramsay. And Brussels sprouts are delicious when they're cooked perfectly, packed with texture. 
there may be no vegetable more maligned than the lowly Brussels sprout. Put it on someone's plate and you're likely to receive a look of disgust, a wrinkled nose, and a refused dinner. Oh my god, it's Brussels sprouts! There aren't many things to make these little mini cabbages any better, but what if there actually was? Count on Gordon Ramsay to take the vegetable that no one can stand and make it not only much better, but the star of the show. How does he accomplish such a feat? By doing one thing that can make any dish better no matter how bland, boring, or unappetizing. Add bacon to it. Specifically, add pancetta, a fancier type of bacon. This Brussels sprout dish is also accented by chestnuts, which not only add a nice flavor profile, but also texture. This recipe also utilizes a secret weapon in any dish, one that any chef should always keep in mind, lemon zest. It's true that most home cooks might not think about adding lemon zest. After all, it's an ingredient that doesn't get used all that much in home-cooked recipes, but why not? Lemon zest is the perfect way to add a little bit of lemon flavor without adding the acidity of lemon juice. It's a good thing to have in the back of your mind for almost any recipe, be it a meat or a vegetable. Mastering this recipe will give you the knowledge to make a great side dish in the future, whether it involves Brussels sprouts or not. And the flavor is extraordinary. Chef Ramsay's healthy, full English breakfast. So tonight we're gonna be making a full English breakfast. A full English breakfast. There's no better way to start the day than with a giant breakfast. After all, it can achieve two goals, depending on what you're planning to do. It can give you a lot of fuel to accomplish many different things throughout your day, or it can be a great hangover cure. What you do with a full breakfast is up to you. However, you should always know what goes into making a big breakfast, especially if you're going to be cooking for other people. And let's face it, if you have the opportunity to make breakfast for someone, then you really have to get it right. <laughs> Luckily, Gordon Ramsay has a great recipe for a full English breakfast. You may not be able to find everything you need for an actual English breakfast unless you live in England, but learning the basics of making one will help you in making any breakfast you eat throughout your life. This version of an English breakfast is actually slightly healthier than the traditional one you may have seen in photos online. It utilizes back bacon, a cut of bacon with less fat on it, poached eggs, and a portobello mushroom cap. Despite the lack of greasy bacon and black pudding, you'll still probably be able to impress someone with this meal, especially if you include the on-the-vine tomatoes that Gordon calls for. Have a look at the two, one great breakfast and one frankly boring and ordinary. <laughs> Beef Wellington the Gordon Ramsay way. How do you gauge whether or not it's cooked? What do you do? What do you do? You cut the end off, chef. Thank you. When it comes to dinners that are truly going to impress people, there might not be a more perfect dish than beef wellington. It might seem like an intimidating dinner to make, but really, just putting in the effort and listening to some good advice on how to make it perfect can result in one of the best dishes you might ever serve in your life. Guys, it's phenomenal. <laughs> it is absolutely delicious. Of course, there's no better source for a good beef wellington recipe than Gordon Ramsay himself. It's barely edible. After all, you have to trust the master when it comes to foods that originated in the UK. Gordon Ramsay's beef wellington might seem like a more advanced dish for inexperienced cooks, but there's nothing gained when nothing is ventured. Ramsay's recipe for beef wellington combines some truly amazing flavors into one incredible dish that's sure to be the hit of the holiday season or any time you choose to make it. Although, we would suggest making a dish this hearty in the winter months, as it's the perfect kind of meal to warm you up from the cold. Beef wellington, of course, involves wrapping a good cut of beef, in this case, a nice beef tenderloin, along with a mixture of sautéed mushrooms, thyme, and other seasonings, and wrapping them up in a puff pastry. Ramsay's beef wellington goes a step further, using parma ham to enhance the other flavors and bring in another protein. His recipe also includes a red wine sauce, which would be a great way to try your hand at making a pan sauce for the first time. It's the kind of beef wellington that I'd be serving at the Savoy Grill. We've got the perfect recipe for more great videos. Just point and click. And to find out how to become an official Babble Topper, click on the join link in the description below. And a quick shout out to Light Mage for suggesting this video.